Hey guys, I have a package today. This is from Netgear. So, we're going to check it out. It's Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 Netgear. Let's check this one out. What can this Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 do? Well, Netgear sent this one to us so that we can do a product review, try to explore the features, and try to set it up so that you can get to have an idea of what it can do. Well, this is a Wi-Fi 6 technology. It's AX6000 tri-band Wi-Fi system. So to get to know more, let's go ahead and unbox it. By the way, this video is sponsored by Netgear. First up guys, read me first, but I always say read me later. Then installation guide, we pull up the devices, take a look at that later. Open this box, wall mounting accessories, then add-ins, this is a sticker for Wi-Fi indication, a screw, then power adapter 1, power adapter 2, Ethernet cable, then that's it. Let's remove the plastic covers and take a closer look. This packaging from Netgear comes in two devices. The first one is your router, the second one is your satellite. This can cover up to 6,000 square feet. You can add up to four more satellite or be pro if you want more coverage. These devices also gives you up to six gigabits per second throughput. Enhanced security features such as WPA3, the highest level of wireless authentication, supports VLANs, and you can create up to four SSID for you to separate the categories of your users. More of it during the configuration. And of course, tri-band mesh technology that keeps you connected even if you jump from one device to another. At the back of the Orbi Pro router, you have a one link that can speed up to 2.5 gigabits per second and four gigabit ethernet ports for wired devices. Port 2 and 3 supports link aggregation mode. And you have a reset button for you to wipe the configurations you made if you want to. The Orbi Pro satellite port orientation is similar with the Orbi Pro router, which has 2.5 gigabits port and 4 Ethernet gigabit ports and supports for link aggregation mode. Let's go ahead and plug these devices power them up so that we can do the configuration. Lights up. Plug in the satellite. Plug it up. Okay. Next up is Read Me First. You need to download and install Netgear Inside app for us to configure these devices with a phone. Yes, with a phone. By the way, don't forget to plug in the internet to your one port so that this gets connected to the internet for us to configure these devices. I have already installed the app of Netgear. I'll just open it up, then get started. On the upper right hand corner, there's a plus sign, click that one, and then you get to scan a QR code. You just scan that QR code in front of this Orbi Pro router, then it will get you started. So the first thing you need to do is set up where are you going to put this device. So for me, I'll just name it as main office. So I'll put it in my main office. Okay. Then the password. This is not a Wi-Fi password. It's a device password so that we're going to use this one to access these devices. Okay. So I'll just put in a very simple password here and you go for next. Okay, wait for a few seconds. Then there you go. We can change the name right here so that we can identify this device. I just type in MOR, that means main office router and go for next. Okay. Then setup is in progress. Okay. So Netgear 
the configuration is that it's push waiting to connect. So it's going to push the configuration to this Orbi Pro router. Basically, we're going to wait here. Netgear's app is going to do the uh, configuration for itself. So there you go. It's connected, but we still don't have an IP address. So we need to wait up. Um, the change that we have seen is the MOR. It changed that name. And then here we go. It's connected with an IP address. So that's good. I'll click on that device, then yeah, set up pending. Okay, important update. It's going to change the IP to avoid conflict. Continue. So that would be 10.0.0.1. We're going to choose router because that's the router. And then it's going to ask us to add an Orbi Pro satellite. Let's just go ahead and say, yeah, sure. Continue. Okay, so you need to place the Orbi Pro satellite onto something that the router can connect to and you can see it here they're just beside each other so no problem at all so wait for the Orbi Pro satellite led to light solid white okay well go ahead and press next then I need to press the sync button at the back so I'll just go press that one you cannot see it I'm holding it with my hand but at the back I'm pressing it then detecting satellites device is offline okay I'll do it again next try to do this one again so I did this one a couple of times already but I got stuck with detecting satellites so I have to force exit the app because if I try to press the back button it's not going back so I'm just going to exit this one like what I did earlier when the portion of this video is cut, okay? So maybe you're going to run into these issues. That's why I'm showing it to you. So I'm just going to go and press back button. I cannot go back. So I'll just go ahead and force exit the app, then open it again. So when I open it up, uh, maybe later we're going to rate you later then we have the Orbi Pro right up there just go ahead and open this one again and it kind of took me to that loop again where I did earlier so let's just do it instead of adding satellite I'll just skip it and it's going to jump me into creating a Wi-Fi network so at this part, we are not adding a satellite. So it's asking us to create a Wi-Fi network. I'll name it as Torogi Pro. Then how about the password? I'll leave it as is, that's the default password. I can change that one if I want to. Just to make it simple, I'll do that complete. Okay, so this will kind of push the configuration to that device again. So we need to wait for some time. We can just click any button to try to see if it's going to refresh. So configuration in progress. Let's wait for that configuration to be pushed into that Orbi Pro router. Okay, so we have a connected status. Now let's try to open this one up and we can see that there are buttons that we can click here. They are enabled already, especially that satellite. So let's open this one up. You have a disconnected status. This is the one we're trying to add up earlier, but we had an issue. So we did not continue, but it's already here. However, it is disconnected. Now I noticed that it's kind of waiting for this um, Orbi Pro satellite to go kind of active and automatically connect to it. What I noticed with this kind of setup is it has a delay because it needs to push that configuration to the cloud going to these devices. So I go ahead and refresh this one again. Let's try to see. And voila! Orbi Pro satellite is connected. So that's good news. And try to see the light indicator of the satellite. It's blank. It's kind of late. There's a delay. So you see it turned blue. It means it's connected to the Orbi Pro router. 
one more thing here guys you try to see the SS ID here it's delayed as well because you try to see or B SS ID we changed that into Torogi Pro and you try to see the connected clients it's zero but I my phone is connected to it so what I'm going to do is try to browse through the internet to create a traffic from my phone passing through the Wi-Fi router now I need to make sure that I'm connected with Torogi Pro yeah that's correct because that's the SS ID that we created earlier with the Orbi Pro Wi-Fi router so I'll just go ahead to my newsfeed try to scroll this one up trying to create the traffic from my phone passing through the Orbi Pro router going through the internet so I'll go back to the Netgear app and probably the data that the app is collecting would be refreshed so I'll open that one okay we are waiting voila we have one user so there's kind of a delay I'll just go ahead and try to click the network setup and here's a pre-configured VLAN setup that we have here so we have the employee at uh, VLAN 20 you can edit it if you want to yeah and by the way that's the default VLAN one so we are going to leave it as is you can add VLANs if you want to I'll go ahead and type T Pro for the sake of this tutorial so if you know your way around VLANs you know the theories about it you have configured before it's easy to go with this configuration so on the MOR device I need to select which port is a member of the VLAN so I'll, I'll select the Ford port and on the satellite I'm going to select the number four so that it they kind of go along together and I'm going to set this one as an access port so if you know VLANs you know what you're selecting here which one you want to do it's the trunk port or an access port so I'll just go ahead and do access port then I'll go for next I'll just go for next again then it's going to ask me to set up the IP address of the VLAN interface that would be 172.22.30.10 um, setting mask I'll just put in 255.255.255.0 then on the DHCP server if you want to give IP address to our clients then that will be up to you I'll go ahead and try to do 100 then confirm so that it's going to push this configuration to the devices the Orbi Pro router and the Orbi Pro satellite one other thing I forgot to mention about the delay was the SSID that we changed Orbi Pro to Torogi Pro as you can see this time it's Torogi Pro so it took the time to kind of give that update to the devices okay so at least I've pointed that with you so let's try to check the security feature of the wireless authentication that we have here click that one you have WPA3 personal so it can support that that what I mentioned it has the highest level of security as of the recording of this video of course well that's just about it for the features you get to discover some of it if you're going to use it now if you want to access this one via a pc or a web browser make sure of course you're connected to the internet so that you can log into that device up your browser type in or be login just press proceed then it will prompt you with the username and password so you know your username and password the one we set up earlier with the app that's the same with that so here's a quick view with that it's a little bit different from the phone but most of the functionalities are kind of the same so at least you can always go to a PC and configure your devices if you want to well that's just about for me guys if you have learned something from this video don't forget to hit that like button subscribe to my youtube channel and help me make a dream of 100,000 subscribers 
See you in my next video.